Bible Spirits, Fellowship of Juggalos, Hatchet's Hatchery, and the Holy Order of the Hatchet, Ninjas in Action. I am your host, Reverend Last Right, and this is the Reverend Last Right Show. You know, in recent events, we've had a tragedy, and if you haven't been watching the news, you know, you haven't been keeping up. Uh, and I know some of us don't watch the news on purpose. I'm one of them. You know, I get my my tragic shockers from Facebook, and, and then I ask somebody who I know does watch the news, and like, hey, does this shit really go down? They're like, yeah, man, this shit fucking happened. Uh, because the news, to me, is depressing. Well, we're looking at 17 dead. And I start to ask the question, just like uh, in Carnival Carnage, 17 dead, anybody else? What do we have to do as a society to make sure it's not anybody else? Okay? So I start thinking about it. Is gun control laws going to stop it? Probably not. Because everybody knows, or anybody who's lived in an area that is high in crime, that if a man wants to get a gun, he don't have to go to the gun store to get it. Homie G, down the street, will sell him a gun at knockoff prices, just like a fruit juicer. <laughs> He'll get his ass a gun, some way, shape, form, another. Does there need to be strict controls, as in the sense of uh, flagging mental illness? Well, here's the thing, the catch with that is, uh, and I believe yes, you know, uh, because what you can catch is a good catch, but you're not going to catch them all. Because not everybody with mental illnesses are registered. Not everyone walks around who has mental illness and stops and goes, You know, I think I got a fucking problem. Having these images in my head about fucking dead kittens and shit probably shouldn't be happening. I should probably go to the doctor and say something about that. You know, because the chances are he doesn't have any form of of health care as it is. So he probably doesn't even recognize or realize that he has a fucking problem and wouldn't be able to afford it if he did. So, that's not going to stop everybody. Is it important to have that in place? Yes. So, my question is, I spent 20 years in the Navy and I managed three years of those seagoing years, if you will. I was Naval Security Forces. And in that time, being Naval Security Forces, um, I was able to protect with a group of other officers an aircraft carrier with a population of 5,000 people. So if the Navy would, you know, and I'm going to say minimal training, we had our military training, we had our safety training, you know, we had uh, other training, but but honestly, to be a security officer and, and carry a gun and, and walk around and fire that gun, three week training. It was three weeks of training. It was one week of, of theory, you know, about a couple days of, of actual testing and theory, and then you have you had uh, weapons training. Now a lot of folks never held a gun before. You know, some folks were afraid to hold a gun, refused to be security because they, they were scared to hold a gun, you know. And some of us had prior experience with that, you know. And then you have about a week of hand-to-hand combat training, you know. So you're learning your secondary controls, you're learning your baton, arrest procedures, you're learning uh, OC spray. That's fun. That's like the devil pissed in your fucking face. Your whole face is on fire. And a lot of these dumbasses think that, oh, well, let me go take a shower that night and wash this shit off. No, you, you want to see something funny, you'll see a dude run out the fucking shower screaming that his balls are on fire because what was in his face has now drained down to his testicles and the water has activated it. So now he's his fucking nuts are on fire and he's running around the damn bird and go, Ah! Ah! Call medical! <laughs> Funny as shit. Anyways, so we had minimal training, but even with that minimal training, we have the proper leadership in place and we can defend 
an aircraft carrier of 5,000 people sitting in a foreign port. And how we do that is we set up multiple choke points, uh, multiple checkpoints, checkpoints and choke points. Okay, what a checkpoint is we stop and we check your baggage, we check your ID, we look through your baggage, we make sure you ain't carrying nothing. But we do that at such a distance away from the ship that if you do have a bomb of some sort and it goes off, it only takes out the people in that immediate vicinity. Now, granted, that sucks. It sucks for you checking the baggage. You know, it sucks for your buddy standing next to you and it sucks for the people waiting in line that are right there in that immediate vicinity. But the ship's safe because the ship's far enough away that it's not going to cause immediate damage or immediate threat to the ship. Uh, but we also have choke points as well uh, to bottle the amount of people that have access coming in. So what you do is you have a, a, a crowd of folks wanting to come in to the ship and you bottle that crowd to where only one or two can pass through at one time and that allows the security officers to check those IDs and, and, and look for anything suspicious because they're only looking at two people at a time. Let me look at you, show me your ID, let me check your face, to name, to uh, 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 birthday, uh, uh, rank, you know, you're going to look at the ID and, and you can even ask questions, take the ID from me, ask the questions, look at the back of the ID, ask them a question, you know, what's the last for your social, you know, now they have DOD ID numbers, but, uh, you know, back in the day, it was, what's the last for your social, you know, if you don't know the answer to the last for your social, He's probably a fucking imposter, you know. If he hands you a card and there's a chick on it and he's a dude, he's a fucking imposter, you know. If he hands you a dollar bill instead of an ID card, you laugh. It, it has happened. You know, people have gone through the gate with a folded up dollar bill because the security officer wasn't doing his job. And then stop there and say, give me your ID card. Hand me your ID card. Or let me hold your ID card so I can see that this is a physical ID card, not something that you forged your fit. So you have that. But we have an influx of people coming out of the military, specifically the Navy, because when you get all this training from the Army and from the Air Force, that training comes with certifications, especially the Air Force. The Air Force is notorious for taking care of its people. Army's pretty good about it too. Navy, Marine Corps, not so much. We kind of get the, you know, on the way out. But <laughs> so uh, you have these folks that are trained up, have these certifications. Now the military has gotten better, but Navy has taken steps to make sure that your certifications come with your training. They have a program in place, but I think it's a bullshit program. I think it needs to be automatic with your training. If you spent six months in school being trained on being an electronic technician, you should leave that school with an electronic technician certification. So that when you're done with your four years in the military or six years in the military or, or however many years in the military, when you walk out into the civilian world, you are walking out with an electronic technician certification or whatever, you know, a, a, a cooking certification or, or nursing certification or something of, something of that value that you can literally walk into the civilian doors and say, look, I was a nurse in the military. Or... If you are master at arms, look, I was a Navy cop. Let me hear work at your precinct. You know, I, I have the training, I have the, you know, the certifications, I, I, I am firearm called, you know, that kind of stuff. So, how do we stop these school shootings from happening? You see a meme walking around, you know. Me personally, I believe that you need a team of no less than five military or retired police officers or, or veterans, but armed security that have anti-terrorism training or counter-terrorism training. Depending upon, I think they changed it recently to counter-terrorism because it sounded PC. 
just like back in the day, it used to be anti-submarine warfare, and someone was like, well, the Russians might not like that. They might not like it being called anti-submarine warfare because we might be talking about them, they might get offended. I don't give a fuck if you're offended, okay? It's anti-submarine warfare. Now it's undersea warfare. Gotta make it PC. The Navy has changed its acronym so many times to make things PC that you don't even know what the fuck they're talking about anymore. You know? Are you talking about electronic warfare? Are you talking about C2W command and control warfare? Are you talking about information warfare? Oh, warfare is not PC enough. Now it's information operations. Bring back the fucking warfare and scare the shit out of somebody. We're a military for Christ's sake. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so how do we you know prevent future events from happening? We should have been looking at America as a whole should have been looking at the school shooting situation as a security problem. You have an asset and you need to defend that asset. How do you defend that asset? As a security problem on the first school shooting. The first time it happened, we need to say, oh shit, we gotta protect these kids. How do we do that? How do we protect this school? How do we stop little Timmy from coming in with a gun? Well, little Timmy sees his principal walking around going, don't do that, little Timmy. He don't care. He thinks he can kill him. He thinks he can shoot him. I'm gonna take this guy out. But if he sees a guy standing there full operator mode, I'm not gonna walk up on that school. That guy might fucking eat me. You know, I'm sorry. We don't live in the 1950s anymore. We don't live where everyone walks in with a smile. It's great and gracious. The world just farts out unicorns and butt flowers everywhere. We don't, that word, world does not exist anymore. Okay? We live in a world of terrorism. We live in a world of crazies with guns. We live in a world with predators. Okay? We live in a world where mankind has tossed aside its freaking values and the ringmaster runs large as we, we vomit out our own freaking sins on the planet. That's the world we live in. We don't live in a world of happiness and kind and joy. I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. It's not the sermon that I'm going for today, but it's something that I really feel. You know, how, how, how do we deal with these issues? What's related next to that is viewpoints. You see, what causes anger and frustration and, and granted, bullying is a cause to it. But when you boil down the effects of bullying, when you boil down the actions of the bullier, when you boil down hatred and bigotry, you get the overarching extremism. Extremism is not based off of one political group or one religious group or one group or, or another. Extremism is a disease of the mind. For some reason, that particular individual only sees in black and white. They do not look at the gray in the middle. There is no compromise. There is no, I can, I see the situation, I can see the situation. There is black and white. There is do, there is do not. There is no happy medium in the world for them, for an extremist. So when you talk about things such as bigotry, bigotry is a form of hatred, a form of extremism. It's caused by an individual who is unwilling and intolerant to another person's skin color, lifestyle, religious preference, or anything that it is different from them. They are intolerant from. That's where the term bigotry comes from. You know, when we when we think about it, we immediately think racism. Racism is a form of bigotry. And bigotry is a form of extremism. You know, it's all connected together. So unrelated to what I was talking to I'm talking about in the beginning of uh, our discussion here, the Red Lives Right show, 
uh, I want to talk about this extremism. I was online the other day, and I had this guy say that if you're a Wiccan or you're a Satanist, then unfriend me. Unfriend me because I'm I'm uh, uh, a Christian and I can't uh, associate with you for this that and yeah. And I had to take pause because I was like, "This thing, you know, because he was using Bible quotation." And I said, "It also says in the Bible, uh, judge not, lest ye be judged.' It also says in the Bible to love thy neighbor as thyself. It also says in the Bible to love your enemies." You know, and then he countered back with some other, and, and he was taking the literal interpretation of the Bible. But at the same time, I looked at home, my, my man's profile, and he said, Juggalo on And I started thinking to myself, and I can understand, a lot of folks aren't educated enough to know the difference between a Satanist and a Luciferian. Okay? They're not educated enough to know the difference. Uh, and, and, and that's no fault of them. Uh, I, a lot of folks, uh, you, know, you, you, you have to kind of be open-minded and exposed to things, you know, and, and it really involves experience, you know, what kind of experiences you have. And I have experienced enough to recognize when an individual uh, has a belief structure that they truly believe in or they weren't hugged enough by mom and dad. I know the difference, you know. I know the difference between someone who believes in a very ancient style of belief predating Christianity that the Romans themselves actually believe. And they've watched, you know, the, the difference between that and they've watched the craft too many fucking times, you know? I know the difference between a pagan and a plagan, you know? I know the difference between, you know, I, I believe in this because of the, the cycle and, and the stars that make sense and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I have powers. I'm going to do some things to my anus, you know? I know the difference between those things. I know the difference between someone who respectfully believes in what they believe in and an ass clown. That takes experience to understand these things. But at the same time, extremism has seeped into the Juggalo culture. The Juggalo culture bases its existence on the foundation of family. That we are all family. Caveated let me caveat something. That we are all individuals. Now, when you're dealing with a bunch of individuals, you're going to have clashing personalities. You're going to have differences of opinion. You're going to have different differences. You're going to have different races, different cultures, different backgrounds, different all these things. But as a juggalo nation, we accept each other's differences. You know, we look at these things as complete. You're different than me, but you're still family. We don't sit there and go, if you don't juggle the way that I juggle, unfriend me. Be gone with you. You do not juggle all my way. It's fucking retarded. You know? And that's what's happening. You know, we, we look and then we see these things and they keep rearing their ugly heads. I remember fucking ten years ago, it was all about, uh, well, if you don't have these CDs... If you can see my CD case, notice that it has everything since dog meets, everything since intelligence and violence. You see these things, look, and they are current now, okay? So I have every single CD case. Now, you only have a quarter of those CDs, so therefore, I am the better juggalo, you know? And literally, that's what fucking people were basing their whole cultural belief structure on, was how many fucking CDs you had. You had a guy who just got off of work, he's wearing a suit and tie, motherfuckers in the county, making money, still a juggalo, comes to the damn concert, and ninjas is looking down cross-eyed because he ain't wearing no hatchet gear. Why that guy got no hatchet gear? You know what I'm saying? He got, he 
with your motherfucking shit, man. You know what I'm saying? With your shit at. Ain't you got your hands and gear on? It's that and the other. You ain't juggalo like me. Okay? What the fuck? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a form of extremism that we cannot accept someone who is different that does things differently that exists differently than us and we have to lump them into a category and say you're not as juggalo as me or you're not the same kind of person as I am you know same thing with, with uh, you know we talk about religions you know well, which religion is better this one's Christian and this one's not this one is and, 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 and this one believes Christians fight amongst each other you know I'm a, I'm a universalist juggalo I was raised Episcopalian you know Episcopalians will fight with fucking Catholics about you know this they, 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 they fight amongst each other you can't be as Christian as me because you're the dude man called me a lukewarm Christian I don't know what a lukewarm Christian is is there temperatures of water out there that defines Christianity or not if I was a hotter Christian does that make me a better Christian perhaps if I heated up my coffee a little bit more I could be a better Christian am I supposed to take the communion as steaming hot or is it supposed to be lukewarm I don't know is the wine supposed to be cold hot I don't fucking know what a lukewarm Christian is okay I know what a good person is. I know what a man who meets other men and women in the middle and what that is. I know how those things are. You know, I told my homies that I was going to do a Valentine's Day-esque sermon. But I also said the Carnival Hands Me sermons literally right before I'm about to fucking preach it. Right, right before I'm about to say, let's do this. I won't know what the heck I'm going to talk about until something happens. And I'm like, you know what? I know that's cool and all, and I want to talk about this, but this is important. I really need to speak about this here and now and talk about that. And today, for me, talking about real quick in the beginning, you know, you kind of got a sermon and a half Sorry about that. In the beginning, I talk about the school situation. Uh, coming from a security background and, a, and an intel background, boggles my mind how we haven't figured this the fuck out yet. But you know, there's that, and that kind of bleeds into this extremist idea of one person isn't equal to me because they're slightly different, or what the case may be. You know, I was listening to a homie doing this shit, and I like underground rappers, you know what I'm saying, I'll listen to your shit, you know, when you say, hell yo, check this out, I'll hit play, and listen, even if I don't comment, you know, I'll try to give it a like here and there, you know, and if I see something, you know, and I'm like, boom, you know, it all depends on what's going on in my life right now, but I'll listen, to see what you have to say, as an individual, and music speaks to us on so many levels. And there's no, there's no correct way to juggle you know, other than the fact that, you know, we do have cultural norms, that's true, we have cultural, juggalos don't beat their wives, it's a cultural fucking norm, juggalos are racist, that's a cultural norm, you could probably list out a whole fucking shit ton of cultural norms. Your religion is different than my religion. This dead man is all fucking sentiments. When you leave this world, are you taking, and, and I love the hatchet to the day that I die, but this is not going to go with you. This is a physical chain. The meaning behind it, the spirit behind it, will, but the physical this, your money in your wallet, all this fucking, all this, my money, I'm broke. Empty as fuck, you know. But all this fucking shit, you know. All this, it's not fucking going with you. Your clothes, it's not fucking going with you. Your skin color, it's not going with you. It's not going with you. It's gonna stay in that grave and decay with your motherfucking ass. It's not going with you. 
So why do we fight over these fucking stupid, tangible things? And there's so many reasons that you can sit there and embrace somebody. You know, I'm attracted to people that are different than me because I want to learn something from them. I want to learn something from you. Teach me something I don't know. So that later on, I'm walking around and someone says, Sage, yeah, yeah, you, you can cleanse a house with Sage. Uh, you know, you can do blessings with Sage. Well, where'd you learn that? Well, my homie is different than me. And instead of going, ooh, don't talk to me, I said, come here, show me something I don't know. Let me love you for you and show me something I don't know. Well, Jarrows, it's been another fun episode. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your time. Much love. Woo-woo!